tell me one thing, Camilla and Jeremy. You both are prominent in your fields. You're both homeopaths. You're both fellows. Um, um, so what kind of conversation you have? Is it only about your subjects or? Only. Only? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Those are our best conversations. Uh, our kids say, you know, we never bored together. We, uh, we can talk about everything like going to a movie or having fun or the kids or, you know, finances or just good things. But 70% uh, of our talk in our free time is homeopathy. Like uh, last night we were sitting together, so we were discussing one remedy in Africa that we saw in the cases and our, you know, exchanging experiences. But the kids complain the... that they don't want to come and walk the dog with us because all we talk about is homeopathy and they are completely bored. Yes. <laughs> but so... you never have difference of opinion. It's a huge subject, it's a white subject. We, no, had, one we, yes. <laughs> we had one yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we were discussing this, this, the Bible of homeopathy is called the Ordinal. And I'm doing some particular, I developed some kind of software okay. for interpreting books, poetry, provings, remedies and stuff. And I'm putting the Ordinal into it. So I'm rediscovering all kinds of things that I missed on that. And then I read one paragraph to her that we happen to disagree about. Yeah. I think it's one of the main, the only things that we disagree, but it's always been there that we have this disagreement about it. We have, we about have a disagreement it. about it. And yeah. Hahnemann and Jeremy are on one side and I'm on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, listen, and Jeremy was trying to overrun me by it. And I said, listen, I've also been a homeopath for 25 years. Yeah. I'm entitled to my opinion. Yeah. This is my opinion and this works so for me So you're more like non-conventional. I mean, you are more no. innovative and you're more... Yeah, because if yeah. Hahnemann and Jeremy are on one side and you are on the other uh -huh. side, then you're basically... Challenging the whole premise of homeopathy. What? <laughs> no, it was just a small thing, really. It's an interview something... technique. You yeah. see, it goes like this. Hanuman says, "I want to find out if you like cake." Correct. Don't ask, "Do you like cake?" Because mm. you'll either say yes or you'll say no. Mm. Or you'll say, mm, what does he want me to answer? <laughs> he wants me to like cake, so I'll say I like cake. You see? So you won't be 100% sure. Mm. So mm. instead of that, I will say to you, Parvin, do you like meat, milk, salt, sour, sugar, cake, or chicken? And okay. then you'll say, cake, cake is what I like, you see? <laughs> then I'll know. She says no. I'll ask him direct if he likes cake or not, and I'll, by my intuition, I'll tell if he's telling the truth or not. Oh, she has a gift of intuition and we don't have it. We don't, yes. Yeah. So, exactly, <laughs> this, rule is, this rule is for people without talent. <laughs> but what about asking, what do you like about the cake? Instead of asking whether you like the cake or not, or whether you like these options. That comes maybe, after. Maybe that's the next step, maybe you hate cake. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But in, it, the, what, it, what it was about is that I was saying that there is a passion when people go, yes, and you see the light in their eyes and they say, how did you know? It's, I love cake. It's my best thing. So, you know, if they just go, yeah, yeah come on, you know. Yeah, so, you must do, so this is what we places. had. A, this is what we had. A this conversation is our argument. Here, but this so is yeah. like, of course, in, incredibly uh, boring for any for a regular human being. <laughs> but you had a great practice uh, in UK. Uh, you have been teaching in about 20 countries, then yeah, Africa, I'll, I'll, Tanzania. I'll tell you, this, uh, this was a long-term mission, like mm. your travels, you know, only I was planning it for 10 years before. Mm. And it came from several places. One thing is that uh, I, because I have practices in uh, New York, in Moscow, in Israel, in London, Mm. I treated quite a few AIDS patients in the early days, in the 90s. Okay. And I saw that homeopathy, which is amazing anyhow, was even more amazing in AIDS. Mm. Can't be sure why, but our theory is that because AIDS is a compromise of the immune system, okay. because homeopathy stimulates the immune system, it's one of the mechanisms of actions, people responded really beautifully. And then we thought, you know, there were 28 million people with AIDS at the time in Africa. Mm. We can help. It's not a question if, if we should go or not. It's our duty to go and to do this because we can make a difference. Yeah. Okay. There were other reasons too. I, I was teaching in homeopathic philosophy, epidemic philosophy, 
not a lot of people teach that in homeopathy, you know, in the homeopathic world. And I've been teaching that for many, many years. And I wanted to see mm. how it works in a very big epidemic. And I wanted to also fight for homeopathy. Homeopathy comes under attack from a lot of people in the world all the time, constant attack. And I said, I can sit here and talk on the radio, the TV or this and that, or I can go and do something and show the world what is possible to do with homeopathy. Yeah. You, in one of your essays which I read, you said that uh, Africa responds well to homeopathy because there is no allopathic suppression. No, uh, that's, that's not, that's, is, the, the fact is right, the interpretation is wrong, mm -hmm. I think. The Africans seem to respond much better to homeopathy than, uh, you know, non-Africans, Westerners in particular. Correct. Uh, in an amazing way, it's just unbelievable how well they respond. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the theories my students often like to say, oh, that's because they don't have allopathic suppression, but it's not true. They are very medicine happy, mm -hmm. but I think that basically they are more connected to their energy to their, I know I'm not so allowed to say energy on the scene. No, no, please, please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> to their roots, to their earth, to their energy. To the roots, to the earth. You know, yeah. when you see them dancing, Correct. or when you see them climbing a tree, Correct. you know, the way they climb a tree, then mm -hmm. I wouldn't even be able to think about starting to go up the highest tree, no branches, nothing. They're up there in a second. Yeah. Wow. You know. And it's, it's nothing to them. It's like they're walking up the tree. Correct. So yeah. they, they, they have Amazing. a vitality and energy and flexibility. Mm. And, and you, she will tell you about the belief systems also. I, I, don't, I think that they just simply, they don't know how antibiotics work and they don't pretend to know how Western okay. medicine works. Correct. They don't give a shit. They don't mm. care. Same thing with homeopathy. They don't care that it's different, how it's different, what it's different. To them, it's all the same. It's not like, uh, like it in the West. Kills. Yeah. So they yeah. they expect the injection to make them better. They also expect the homeopathy to make them better. And right. I think that this does something to your perception of what, what what's going on. It's like we always laugh about uh, treating Westerners with homeopathy, and it's never they very rarely give the credit to homeopathy that they are better. It's like the best. One of my favorites is, oh, I'm now I'm sleeping on two kilos, and that's why I'm better. Or oh, I stopped well, the cheese. Exactly. Or something like <laughs> I, that, I started know. taking omega oils. Or, oh, you see, and, the sun is shining. I'm feeling better. But never, that, never the homeopathy. Whereas in Africa, they say straight up, yes, your medicine made me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but how does it make economic sense to be in Africa, leaving Europe and leaving... Uh, uh, no sense at all. We, we, we are... We are yeah, no sense at all. <laughs> we, we are lucky because, you see, people, people... There are projects in Africa, homeopathic projects, and uh, we're in touch with them and we know them and we support them and everything. Where we are lucky is that we are fairly well known in the homeopathic world. So we got a lot of support. Mm. Uh, from homeopaths, not from no big organization. I mean, we tried all these famous people that use homeopathy. Camilla has a fantastic campaign on Facebook, you should see it. She's got, it's like Prince Charles, I use homeopathy, yes. Tina Turner, I use homeopathy, yeah. Queen, Paul McCartney, all but these you people. you approach Bill Gates, you approach Yeah, school. they won't give, yes. Yeah, no, they, they don't, don't give want, money. No. Because, you know, first of all, they hear homeopathy, they're scared of the tax that they will get and uh, it's very difficult to get through to them. We are both too busy treating people to do all this advertising campaign, you know all about it. And so we never managed to get a big sponsor, but fortunately from the homeopaths, each one giving $5 a month, we could run the thing which costs us $5,000 a month. So you know, we we've been to... we've been really lucky with that, and I have to say that social media has been very helpful because otherwise we would have had no way of showing what we're doing. So um, Jeremy called it in the beginning. He said, "What are you doing? Are you messing on Facebook again?" So <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's, a, she's a queen. When Facebook was still good, she's yes. a queen of Facebook so, and media and Instagram. But, he, but, but, but I didn't. I, I didn't. Uh, 
I had no, uh, I didn't know, this was in 2009, I didn't know what could be done. Okay. I would write like two lines, take a photo of a patient and two lines of, you know, used to be 46 kilos, no appetite, pains all over the body. Now 65 kilos, complaining is too fat and uh, <laughs> no <laughs> symptoms at all. And it would go viral. Yeah. Every homeopath would share, yeah. and it was like a, it was for for the homeopathic community, which started to be under serious attack from 2005 onwards, especially right. in the UK. Well, it's a for, source of pride. It was a source of pride and showing this is what we can do. And then scalability in Africa, let's say, um, training more more and more people for yeah. homeopathy doctors. Are you planning yeah. to open a hospital, I mean, school there or colleges there? We, we, we have some kind of a plan like that, uh, which is to open clinics mm -hmm. that are multidisciplinary. We, our vision is to open a clinic mm -hmm. that has conventional doctor, homeopath, nutritionist, physiotherapist, optician, dentist, blah, 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 everything, that. acupuncturist, yeah. because what we realized in our work is that with AIDS, you need a multi approach. And why fight between each other? Everybody's yeah. helping, everybody's exactly. doing things. It's not about, like your question before, allopathy or homeopathy. This is not the question. <laughs> what is number one? What is number two? It's not a question of number one or two. It's a question of having options. What you have, what is wrong with you right now, what is the best approach for you in this particular situation, disease, or whatever you've got at the moment. And it's not always the same thing. So so this kind of, um, you know, of integrated... Choice, so integrated medi medicine and, and freedom of choice yeah. and maybe I hate needles so I don't want acupuncture please yeah. don't do it <laughs> so I want I want to choose something else you know it's, it's yes. about humanity and, and and making those choices and sometimes the right choice is that and sometimes it's that it's it's really like Jeremy says why fight why why make it this or this or yeah. alternative medicine? True. No, and, it's complementary. In, in, India is the best at that. Yeah. Yeah. India, India are world champions. At, you guys. At, because in India, again, they don't have that kind of judgment. Homeopathy, no. Allopathy, yes. This, yeah. yes. That, no. Mm. You have, you know, the, the Ministry of Health incorporates all these modalities. That's the amazing thing in India. Yeah. You people have done it to a large degree. Yeah. Mm. This is a huge credit. You are a PhD in TCM, right? I'm I'm a qualified TCM. Yeah. Qualified no, TCM. No, no, What's yes. your opinion on TCM or Ayurveda, the other uh, forms of medicine? <laughs> what that I practice, uh, homeopathy is number one by far. Mm. I studied TCM, and you know I did a lot of alternative medicines in my in my young days. I studied a lot of them, but really, with homeopathy, I'm not looking for anything else. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, I've got Kamala, I don't have to look at all the other women. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna no. pay for that no, one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Lovely. But yeah. I think it's a matter of personal choice. You know, some people love cutting people up. Mm. They lo they love it. They love right. being a yeah. surgeon. Yeah. Uh, some people love to take photos. Some people. It's the same thing with with yeah. medicine yeah. and with with uh, with healing. There's no one way to health. Yes. Obviously, there are yes. many roads. And whatever suits anyone is. Lovely. Yeah. Jeremy, uh, two questions we ask every influencer. We call you both influencers as you influence the society, bring progress to society, bring a change in society. Mm -hmm. What is your word to the youth? I mean, your word as well. Yeah, okay. But yeah. Uh, do homeopathy. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't do it, use it as your part. When you have kids, mm. Kamala will say that more than me. Mm. A thousand times, you know, really thousands of times. I can't remember how many times when our kids were sick, toothache, earache, this and that and the other, as kids are appendicitis or whatever, we say to each other, what would we have done if we didn't have homeopathy? Here they are better in 20 minutes. What would we have done? Spent our life in hospital? What do people do? But let's talk on a different level. You, you're talking about inspiring people and you know, Everything I hear myself saying now already sounds like a cliche because so many people are going to say, follow your heart, follow your dream, do what you want, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, uh, and we've all heard it a thousand times. And really, 
there's a lot of truth in that, but you know what? It's not always tr true also. I want to say that, you know, the, the conventional thing today is follow your dream mm. and do what you want and, and be yourself. Yeah. And all that is nice, but it doesn't always work. I, I remember Steve Jobs giving a talk about anybody can achieve their dream. Mm. You know, b before he died, he gave yeah, a famous talk. Yeah. yeah, Anybody can achieve their dreams. And I was, and be what they want and be who they want. Yeah. And I was at the time traveling through the Maasai villages mm. where these kids have to walk 10 kilometers to get a bucket of water that will last them a week. Mm. And I was thinking, how many of them are, can live their dream, whatever their dream is? Do they even know that there's a dream? Yeah. You know, if they knew there was a dream, which they don't, mm. they have no idea that they can go and be a great architect because they don't even know what it means, mm. you know? So a lot of that is, is nice fantasy for California. You know, you go to the rest of the world, live your dream would be lovely for everybody. But I say, change it around and say the way make the way you're living your dream meaning bring the now into whatever you're doing you don't have to be number one you don't have to change the world you don't have to influence people you don't have to be huge or big or anything else you just have to be in the moment do what you do with your heart with your whole self and you know, you don't always have to aspire. Don't look at it. statement is very good. Make what you're doing into a dream. Exactly. That's an excellent statement. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. So that's yeah. what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Camilla? I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> oh, between you two, he speaks too much, is it? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I'll say for Camilla. Yeah. Yeah. God, I have him! Oh my God, what would I do? <laughs> Camilla, whatever she does, she can always laugh. You know, it does. She, she'll do. She'll be pissed off. She'll be angrier than a Viking on fire. Yeah. You know, but the next moment she'll be laughing. That's right. And she's always able to move on and forget and move on and just uh, and forget and be happy and forget. <laughs> yeah. I don't forget. She forgets. <laughs> So in that, she's, she's more advanced than I am because she, she's more able to live the moment, you know, go up and go down and quickly, but always come back to laughing and enjoying and being happy. It, love it, love it. I think most of it is a very low hanging fruit. You just ignore it. It's low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Don't go for the top of the tree always. Yes. You know, because you know when... we sold our kids. Go right. to the top of the tree. No, yeah. no. <laughs> enjoy exactly. what's there. Yeah. yeah. Go. I always say to people, my way to happiness yeah. is that I always go under the over the lowest fence. Mm -hmm. And if ever if I succeed in the smallest little thing, I congratulate myself. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. I don't. Um, th yeah. 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 So sentiment behind our journey, as you spoke earlier, Jeremy and Camilla, is to celebrate life. Yeah. And we're sure that you both celebrate life, otherwise you wouldn't do what you're doing. We do. Especially in Africa. What according to you is celebrating life? You know what it is to me. Mm. Oh, in I don't think of myself as a healer mm -hmm. in, in, in such a way. Although I do, in a way, yes. But to me, celebrating life is that you you live and you do the things that you came here to do. On this planet, I, I I said to somebody, I said I'm a I'm somebody who kicks the soul's ass to move on, uh -huh. to to get over yourself, to to become better, to become healthier, to whatever. And it's not the same for me as it is for you. So it doesn't matter what my answer is or Jeremy's answer is, because to every person it's different. But to me, what really makes my soul happy is to see people moving on and getting better and homeopathy working and finding the right remedy. To me, I get such a kick out of that. I get such a high from that. And this is why we talk about homeopathy. This is what we like to share because it's so fantastic when that happens because you feel that something really actually, it matters. Wow. But I'll say something. Yeah, sure, please. What really makes me happy uh. is playing back <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm not a good player. Yeah. I'm not. I don't have a great talent for it. But I study it because I like to study it and to learn it. I have a teacher, I study. 
I'm not good, I know I'll never be great at it. But it's my little challenge to myself. And I do it and I play it and I enjoy it and it's something different from homeopathy. And I think that's that's a great thing to have something that is for no purpose. Yes. Also, you know, yes. it's right. not to mm -hmm. change the world. Yeah. And I'll never be good at it. And I actually like the fact that I'll never be good at it. I don't want to be the best at it. I just want to improve. There's a really nice sentence. The challenge is not to, being noble is not to beat your fellow man. Being noble is to be more noble than you were yesterday. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.